Hi everyone, it's Amy, and I'm here today with a special episode of Vintage Made Modern. We're going to talk about gift ideas for Father's Day that you can make, as well as some fun ways you can upcycle menswear, all different types of menswear, shirts, jackets, um, even ties. So this should be a fun episode, and I'm Thank you for being here today to listen. Okay, so the Vintage Notions book, um, if you'll remember, the, in the chapter, there's always a magic pattern. And the magic pattern I'm going to talk about today is one that is for upcycling a man's dress shirt. And that's what I have here in the back. But before I get deep into talking about the fabric and recycling menswear, I want to tell you a little bit more about what we're doing now on amyberkman.com. We have launched a whole series of images in our image library. And the images that we offer are, many of them are sewing and quilting focused, but we also are bringing you holiday artwork that you can create projects with. Whether you print these images on fabric or you print them on paper, uh, there's so many different ways you can use them. And the first image I'm gonna talk about today is um, this, mother of pearl button card graphic that's on this page in the Vintage Notions book. And you might, if you've seen my recent video I did on mother of pearl buttons, you might have already seen this um, graphic. But beyond that, we have other graphics that would be appropriate for making essentially Father's Day cards or if you're looking for um, wall art, these can be fabulous pieces to enlarge and print. So I'm going to give you a few ideas on ways that you can use these printables. So to start out with, I'm going to show you um, an, an older image that I had in my collection similar to the one that's in the book. And this is, um, again, the Mother of Pearl fancy novelty buttons and many cards were designed like this, where it actually looked like a man's dress shirt and then the buttons were posted on that or sewn on that card. And you can see on the back where it was sewn. And I think it says, you know, quality buttons. The mother of pearl were so durable. Everybody loved um, the quality and um, the life of these buttons. So, and this of course was before plastic. So you can see here how we took another um, vintage image that had been um, a button card graphic and we cleaned it up and offer you just a clean version of it. So you could make a card like, like this, like we did, real simple um, for Father's Day, put a nice greeting inside. You could make a tag. Um, here we added a, a, a grommet or a, um, and then a tie and just printed this um, on regular paper and then mounted it on like a card stock. Another image that we have that I thought would be fun to share for um, for making a card or again, the uh, you know, the wall art. It, and these two are in a collection of images we have on amybarrickman.com. So they come together in um, a set of images and you can purchase them. And when you buy this set, you'll get um, one PDF that has all the images designed onto the page. So you don't have to enlarge, copy, and do that yourself. And we call those click and cuts. So they make it real simple. Just click print, print them out, and have fun collaging, making cards. Um, another image that we have that I wanted to share that's also in the image library as a single image is this um, image again, of a man's shirt with the fun mother of pearl buttons on it. And what we did here on that version, we actually printed on a fabric sheets. So some of you may be familiar with printing on, on inkjet printable fabric sheets or iron on transfers maybe. Uh, so you can do that and it's amazing the fun that you can have with these graphics that we have online for you. And again, you can add a, a really interesting print woven cotton uh, to accent it. And here you can see where we decided, oh, well, we'll sew on, eventually sew on a whole set of buttons down the front of the shirt. 
So I mentioned, I mentioned enlarging these images for other purposes. And what I'm gonna share with you are a couple ideas. Here I go under my secret stash um, for images that we enlarged and then we hung in some, some different ideas for ways that you could get creative with the way you work and hang and display this artwork. So this is one of the images that was in the menswear collection that I mentioned. Um, so this handsome guy, there's, um, he could be again used, you could even just print this and frame it and hang it on a wall. Um, you know, in maybe a library or potentially, um, you know, a guy's bathroom. Um, just fun, handsome artwork to, to, to design with. And then this is another image that's also in this same menswear collection. And here you can um, see where we just used a clipboard. And um, clipboards have these nice little... Um, holes usually at the top. So if if you wanted another option for displaying artwork, whether it be this type of piece that we have or some other fun graphic that you can print from our collection, um, you know, a clipboard's a great idea. And I did want to say this, this is an old hanger that I had found. It's just uh, really awesome. You know, it opens and closes like this. But I did go to... Um, the store and found a newer version of the same vintage hanger. So again, vintage made modern. So if you, you don't have the old version or you haven't found one, you can always go check out, you know, the housewares area of a store and see if you can't find a hanger like this, which again could, could be just work just as well for hanging some of our, our vintage art. And one of the, um, one of the cool things when I was thinking about buttons, I remembered that we'd had some um, projects we'd done with using the leather looking, leather look buttons that you'd find on a man's like suit coat or a lot of times a wool coat might have these buttons. But this was a really um, inspiring collage that uh, I thought was just totally appropriate right now. Um, and a guy, um, a friend of mine named Greg Johnson here in Kansas City, he, I bought this from him, uh, I believe at a, probably down in the West Bottoms, maybe at Good Juju or Urban Mining. And um, you can see what he did on the back too, which I thought was fun. He attached the buttons, found the graphic, used the corners. And I think this piece behind was a piece of ephemera that might have been like a uh, fabric sample card, but on the back to hide his, where he mounted the buttons, he just added this piece of um, this graphic that, again, you could use a printable that we have on amyberkman.com, maybe handwriting or a giant postcard image. Always fun ways to build these collages and design with the images. And speaking of those leather buttons that um, I mentioned, it reminded me that in the Fabric Flowers book, we have, um, oops, here we go. We have a couple f actual projects that are made with menswear. So this, this segues us into talking about how you can upcycle menswear and some things that you can make. So... You can see the um, this buttons or the flowers or brooches we have here are all made from men's ties. And the one button has, or the one flower has that leather look button as the center. This you could use a, like a, a dritz covered button, either stuff a, the center or use a covered button. And there we just found a, an interesting filigree style brass, brass button for the center. Um, so the Fabric Flowers book has some projects. So I'll show you the pages those are, those are listed on. Um, oh, and I want to actually, this is good. This is the ragged edged rose that's upcycled denim. But we also took men's suiting and even the lining from the man's wool coat um, is what you can see in the center here that is the accent of contrast. So this, 
this flower can be made or this rose can be made in denim or here is the version you see right here where you know we did it with the wool and the satin lining of that jacket and then i thought i'd also show you quickly here are here's an idea also for flowers you don't have to actually have them you know wear them you can embellished purses, um, bags. Um, but again, it's spring and it's always fun to think about using beautiful fabrics to make flowers. So thinking about ties, um, let's start with ties and what you can do with the menswear ties. You can, um, you know, here are some ornaments that we've done. This is a product line we call Fabra Flare um, that you, is available from Prim Consumer USA. It's one of the Indigo Junction brands that they now own. And ties are just a perfect uh, fabric. They have the beautiful silks. Sometimes they're reversible. So here's, um, this is the Trillion ornament. And then I'm gonna show you, well, and here it is in a red version. And if some of you have maybe watched my, my Fabra Flare videos, you might have seen these. Now might be the time to create one, use a tie and make one as a Father's Day gift. Here's a star where you can see that we used um, multiple ties and pieced together the arms and added a fun button. I love the color in here, completely retro and um, especially that stripe on top. I can totally see that tie probably from the 60s, 50s, or 60s. And then um, when it comes to Fabra Flare, we also have the spheres that we do. And these are fun. They can also be made as a bowl um, versus the sphere. So this is the Brio Sphere. And it also, this comes as a um, faceted sphere as well. So you can either make this with the cardboard templates or you can buy the stabilizer, uh, Fabra Flare stabilizer to make this. And here we have another version where we made this with, again, we combine men's shirting. You can see the shirting here. And the shirting we combined with our favorite Royals um, team team fabric. So again, if you're making Fabra Flare and you want to, whether it be a college, you know, college team, just have to get a plug in from a Jayhawks. Um, you can make the, the star, the Fabra Flare star. This is the tree topper and ornament. Add the recycling combination of a print with some, some different recycled fabrics um, from shirting. And speaking of, I remembered this stripe, um, I, we recently used in making a mask. So I don't know if, if any of you haven't seen my mask videos, I've done a couple videos about uh, masks, different patterns that are on the, uh, out there available, as well as elastics and different alternatives for elastics. One of the versions that I shared was actually using that same men's wear print. And um, so you can keep in mind if you're, you know, need to make some masks, head to the closet and look for that, those shirts. This is um, one that we, a style that we made. And I'll put a link in the description of this video that'll take you to a PDF that has three different styles of masks to make and some tips and techniques and a list of many of the tools um, that we featured in the videos from um, Dritz and Omnigrid. So keep that in mind, but this is, this and stripes work really well for the masks because if you're doing any of the pleated version, it's a great way to track track what you're doing as far as measurements. This is another version that's shirting again. And we also have this style that is more of the um, shaped mask style. And um, so you can see this, especially if somebody's heading to the office, they might appreciate a little more sophisticated fabric for their mask. And hopefully um, everybody's making them and um, wearing them and, and staying safe these days. And of course, again, those masks are not 
medical grade. I always like to repeat that, that it's important to check the CDC guidelines when you're if you're making masks um, and sharing them and or giving them or selling them. Um, so what else do we make with um, shirting and men's shirts? We're going to get to this apron that's next to me. So when I was showing you the... Um, the Mother of Pearl button graphic, that was on the page in the January chapter of the Vintage Notions book. And again, if you followed along when I did my whole Vintage Made Modern series, um, you might have seen me talk about this pattern, this magic pattern, which was really one of the most popular of the 12 magic patterns in the book. So it's for taking the dress shirt and making it into an apron. And there are three different patterns that are on this page. So I thought it'd be fun to share those with you. Um, and I have, first, I have the, um, the version that is the cross back. And um, it has a pocket here, which I wanted to make sure people, you guys saw the pocket. And what the neat thing about the pocket is you can use the pocket off the dress shirt, just detach it and then reattach it for the pocket on the apron. And then here we have, you can see this is the this is the back of the shirt. And you can see that we add, there's a re inverted pleat here um, from the back of the shirt. So we, you use the back and then the front of the shirt um, is used for the cross back. This is a plaid. We also love to, to do stripes. What the coolest thing about this version is Check out what we use to make the tie of the apron. It's the actual placket where the buttonholes um, were housed. So it's already got finished and finished edge on it. Super simple um, way to come and add your ties. So on each side, each tie is each placket. One of most shirts have, you know, one on each side where you button it. And then this style, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hold it up here on the mannequin um, just to show you what it's like. So this one we added is some cute rickrack detail. But one of the versions uses literally back in the day when women had aprons, they would tie them on and then actually safety pin the bib to the clothing that they had on. And think about it. If they had that apron on all day, maybe the neck, they didn't like the ties around their neck. So this was a way to have, you know, protect your clothing, but um, not have that uncomfortable feeling at your neck. Uh, so anyway, this is one of the versions um, that is the, in the book on the January chapter. And then the last version I'm going to show you, it again has a style None of these styles bind at the neck. This one, you know, has the two um, straps that go around and crosses and back. The cross back apron is always the most comfortable style in my book. But I also like this style. And this style has a half back. Um, so you can see here the half back. And um, it's buttoned, cute orange accent bias and you know what i just realized this is one of the fronts of this sh this half is the front of the shirt because here's the pocket i don't know what you need to put in your pocket on the back of your shirt but you've got one if you figure you can flip your cell phone over your shoulder i guess there you go um but this style is again it uses the back of the shirt as the front and the fronts as the back um and a half back style. So those are, again, one of the magic patterns in the Vintage Notions book. We are doing more and more sharing the Vintage Notions book on my blog at amyberkman.com. We're also sharing more of the images from the book, um, the Women's Institute beautiful artwork. And you can find that also in the Vintage Notions coloring books. So be sure to go to the website, poke around, look at the image library, visit under shop. You'll see all of the images we have available. And you'll also find free printables there. 
So at amyberkman.com, we have a whole area of free printables. And um, in fact, I'm looking at one over my shoulder is the um, I sew, what's your superpower? So if you want to have some fun coloring, add something to your bulletin board in your uh, studio, visit amyberkman.com. And also when you're there, be sure to sign up for my newsletter. You'll also get a collection of free printables when you sign up and you'll be on our list to re receive notification when we do more videos like this and when we offer patterns, projects, um, all kinds of inspiration and fun in vintage made modern style. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you again soon.